In tonight's news, the government reduces the number of plots for sale in the next financial year because of the sluggish property market. Paul Chen's plan to increase bond issues triggers concerns about Hong Kong's financial position. And the Bar Association urges balancing the rights of detainees and enforcement needs under Article 23. With the market remaining bearish, the government has scaled back its land sale program for the coming financial year. Eleven plots of land will be put up for tender in 2024-25, down from 18 in the current year. Eight of them are earmarked for residential development, providing 5,690 homes, down 38% year-on-year. Six of those plots were rolled over from previous years, including a 2.4-hectare site on Cape Road in Stanley, which went through a failed tender 13 months ago. Two remaining sites are both in Sha Tin. One will be put up for tender in the coming quarter. Situated in the Siu Lake Yun industrial area, the tiny plot has yet to complete rezoning procedures and will only provide 280 units. But Development Secretary Bernadette Lin tried to put a positive spin, saying the area is well developed and close to City One Station. Only two commercial sites in Kai Tak and Shek Moon will be available for the whole year. Two prime sites which appeared in last year's program have been shelved, including Queensway Plaza in Admiralty. Lin said the government will not sell the precious site for cheap. She added the removal of special stamp duties for property transactions should boost market sentiment. I think a basket of factors will be at force because it also depends on the developer's strategy and its interest in the individual sites. We do not have a crystal ball, so we won't be able to assess to what extent the removal of the various special stamp duties will affect our land sale program. Raymian Cable News. Finance Chief Paul Chan said the Land Tell Tomorrow Vision Plan is essential to ease the housing shortage in the long run. Because of fiscal deficits, the $580 billion project to reclaim land for three artificial islands of Khao Yu Chao has been shelved but Chan insisted that it would not be cancelled. When asked by lawmaker Lam Chun Singh whether the government would consider ditching the plan altogether, the finance chief said officials will find the most efficient way to complete it. He said the government has prioritized developing the northern metropolis as land resumption has already started, while the development borough is still in the initial stages of planning and designing the artificial islands. Technical feasibility studies are continuing, he added, with the administration actively looking to generate more revenue and allocate more resources to the project. A special group of financial consultants will look into controlling expenditure. Chen rejected handing over the Lantau project to developers who have expressed an interest but would consider collaborating with them. He added that the government is developing the metropolis along the border to ensure there is enough land for housing and employment opportunities. Janice Yu, Cable News. Financial Secretary Paul Chan revealed in his economic blueprint that he has decided to issue more bonds in a bid to replenish the coffers. But with the government's books in the red, some members of the public are worried that it would affect the city's financial stability. In announcing the 2024-25 budget yesterday, Chen revealed a $101.6 billion deficit in the current financial year. By including the $72.5 billion worth of bonds issued in the outgoing fiscal year, it raises the deficit to $173.3 billion. In the 2019-20 financial year, only around $7.8 billion worth of bonds were issued. But in the coming financial year, 
bond issues will jump 15-fold to $120 billion, including $70 billion for the retail market. Some members of the public grabbed the chance to criticize the government's move when the financial secretary took to the airwaves this morning. Mm. One caller accused Chen of having a wrong mindset and pointed out that the government has to pay off the bonds after maturity. He questioned who would be responsible for cleaning up what he called the mess after the minister steps down. Chen emphasized that instead of using bonds to fund the administration's daily expenses, they are treated as an investment for the future to bring in revenue. It is a normal financial arrangement, he said. Starting from the 2025-26 financial year, the authorities will issue bonds with $95 billion to $135 billion annually over the next five years to finance infrastructure development including the northern metropolis. In the Legislative Council, lawmaker Tang Fei asked if bond issues would create a heavier burden as the interest rate is regarded as recurrent expenditure that is offered at a set rate. Chen gave an assurance that the government is capable of paying the interest, which he has already included in his budget estimates. Andrew Lam asked if the government would seek to raise more than $135 billion from bonds. Chen said the figure represents the amount of bonds to be issued per year, not the ceiling. He added that by the end of the five-year period, the government's debt from bonds would make up 13 percent of the gross domestic product, which he believed is a safe and sound level. Janice Lowe, Cable News. Financial Services Minister Christopher Ho has said that proceeds from bond issues will yield long-term benefits for the city and will not be used to fund recurrent expenditure. He added that there's no need to worry as the ratio of government debt to the gross domestic product is much lower than for most advanced economies. If you look at the extent or the level of debt that we're going to incur up to the year 2829, it is at most 13 percent of the GDP. And that ratio is compared very favorably to other advanced economies. So among these factors, among others, I'm sure that the fiscal discipline is definitely not a concern. A day after the public consultation for the Article 23 national security law ended, the Hong Kong Bar Association unveiled its concerns. The barristers' group agreed with the government that the detention of those in certain cases might have to be extended. I can't tell you whether 36 or 37 hours of detention is more appropriate. Um, I'm sure the government will come up with a, a package balancing the rights of the detainee and the need to, for further investigation. I mean, that, that is absolutely essential. And I don't get from the, the consultation documents that that aspect is ignored. Dahl said detainees must be given a chance to appeal. The barristers also urged the government to include the public interest defense for theft of state secrets. Anyone can be caught by such a proposed offense. Uh, we believe that the defense should not be restricted to journalists. Of course, the threshold can't be low because uh, at the end of the day, um, it can be abused. The Security Bureau revealed that it has received 13,147 submissions during the month-long consultation period. Over 98% supported the bill. Just 0.7% of the submissions were against, and these included those from over 10 anti-China organizations or those who fled Hong Kong. In Beijing, Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Mao Ning warned Britain not to interfere in Hong Kong affairs and told London that some provisions in its own national security law are highly open to abuse by police. Janice Lowe, Cable News. The Palestinian death toll in Gaza has risen above 30,000 since Israel started retaliating for a Hamas attack more than four months ago. In Deir al-Bala, a city in the central part of the besieged enclave, 
Bodies were taken to the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Hospital following Israeli attacks on the Nusrat and al burez refugee camps. Those who survived the relentless Israeli airstrikes are losing a battle with hunger as displaced Palestinians sheltering in tents in Gaza's southern city of Rafah face a severe shortage of food. The trickle of aid is not enough to feed the 1.5 million Palestinians seeking refuge in Rafah after the homes elsewhere were reduced to rubble by the Israelis. With no ceasefire on the horizon, Palestinians are worried that the worst is yet to come should Israel go ahead with a planned ground offensive in Rafah. We receive aid only twice a month, which is not enough for the children, said Hanin Hamouda, who has six mouths to feed. Dharil al Amudi said they were given some canned food and a little flour, but no cooking oil. How can we cook, she asked, adding that her family fled with only the clothes on their back. In Gaza City in the north, people navigated through destroyed streets, carrying the few sacks of flour they managed to get. Relief workers say the situation is so dire that in recent days, more Palestinians died from starvation and malnutrition than from Israeli attacks. Sachin Katvi, Cable News. Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing, or HKEX, has recorded an 18% rise in net profit to $11.9 billion for 2023, the biggest increase since a 22% jump in 2020. However, last quarter's revenue declined 13% to $2.6 billion from a year ago. The average daily turnover for the stock market operator took a 16% hit falling to $105 billion for last year. On his last day as chief executive, Nicholas Aguzin said he was proud of his achievements despite facing economic headwinds. We cannot you know, manage the global micro environment. We cannot manage you know, the global interest rate environment, geopolitics. Those things are absolutely out outside of our control. So I, I, I don't feel any responsibility for any of those issues. As I said, I feel very proud of what has been achieved and the, the, the performance, the numbers are out there so you can see them. Bonnie Chan will replace Aguzin as the new head of HKEX from tomorrow.